Uh, 1 Samuel 2, we've been on this for some weeks now, a series we're calling Honor to Whom Honor. And our first text here is in 1 Samuel, the uh, second chapter and the 30th verse. And uh, this had to do with uh, Eli, who was high priest over the house of God, and uh, his sons had done evil things, and he did not stop them. He let them continue, and he had been warned by the Lord, but they just kept on. And finally, the Lord said to him in 1 Samuel 2 and uh, 29, he said, you've honored your sons above me. And in verse 30, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever, but now the Lord says, be it far from me. Now I want you to notice something had changed. God had given them a position and a privilege and a call, and now he's saying, and he, and he gave it to them, to Eli, to, to his boys and to their sons and to their family in perpetuity. And now he said, no, it's not going to be that way though. Why? Can, even though God has given you something precious, can you lose it? Yes. If you disrespect it and dishonor it, obviously you can. He said, I had said that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever, but now the Lord says, be it far from me for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. You remember God chose Saul and made him king, but then he removed him from being king. You know, Saul and his descendants should have been um, the rulership, but then Saul was removed and David was put in his place. Why? Because Saul disrespected the Lord. You know, he uh, didn't do what the Lord told him to do. He changed up the directions and plan. He was rude to the man of God. And, um, you know, he just, just dishonored God and he was removed. And then the Lord said, I found a man after my own heart. Yeah. And we talked about that at length. If you want to learn some things about honor, study David. Yeah. Study his life and, and uh, what he did and how he... Uh, conducted himself and responded to people, you'll see the honor of God in, in those passages. And you know, the, when you're reading the Bible, you're not just reading history. That's right. The substance of these things are in these words. And reading about that honor in the life of David, if your heart is open to it, can come right out of these words and get in you right. and become a part of who and what you are. Do you understand this is a living word? Amen. This is not just a, just a book with ink and paper. This is a living word. Amen. God's words are alive. Amen. And so he went on to say, For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. I want you to say that last phrase out with me two or three times. Them that honor me, I will will honor. Say that again. Them that honor me, I will honor. One more time. Them that honor me, I will honor. Now the rest of it is just as true. They that despise me, that's the opposite of honoring him, shall be lightly esteemed. Now lightly esteemed really is the definition of despised. The word honor uh, the Hebrew word literally means heavy, weighty. What's the opposite of heavy? Light. <laughs> and uh, the understanding is, and in fact the same word is translated glory. God is the God of glory. Uh, saying he's the God of honor is the same thing. God's glory is so amazing, the environment around him is filled with the manifestation of it in light and smoke like a cloud. That's not just water vapor. 
That's glory. <laughs> which, is the, which is on the inside of him. There have been numerous times in times far past and in recent times that God has manifested himself on the earth and his glory has been seen and experienced. Seen with the eye. Experienced many times by the Spirit. And what's the good news in that verse? Them that honor me, I will honor. Are you hungry to experience more of the presence of God? More of the glory of God? Then you need to be hungry to learn about honor. Honor. Uh, I've had some small experience in this. <laughs> I remember one night I was walking behind Brother Hagin in a ministry line helping him. And I could not see. It was so bright. It was like a, a sun shining on snow. It's just, you, and I, and I'm happy though. <laughs> I really didn't care if I could see anything or not. Couldn't see the people. I could hardly see the, the line. The glory of God is real. And there's been many times that I didn't see it but I experienced it. You could sense it. And, and even the definition of the word, heavy. When somebody said, boy, the presence of the Lord was strong. A lot of times you sense it, it's, it's like weight. Makes you want to kind of slide down in your chair. You go, whoo. God is heavy with every good thing. Heavy with every rich and right thing. Hallelujah. So, honor is that which is significant, substantial, weighty. And to despise is to treat something as unimportant, trivial, insignificant. All over this country, there are people that ought to be in church this morning. And they're not because it's not, not important enough for them to get out of bed and go. The things of God, the Word of God, the church of God, the, the kingdom, you know, uh, uh, it's not, not important enough for them to pray or to read their Bible or to put any offerings in or to work you know, on any team or anything. It's just, you know, uh, th there's a, a catchphrase that's popularized by teenagers a few years ago and it, it really describes a lot of this generation, whatever. What does that mean? Whatever. Isn't that a description of despising? It is. You ought not talk like that. Particularly not when it comes to the things of God. There ought not be a whatever. Some things should be a big deal. Yes. Right? right? It's important. You get up, you have to get up early, you get up early, you get ready, you get everything lined up. You, why? It's a big deal. Yes. You put everything you got into it, you do it the best you know how, and believe God to do it better. Yes. Right? And in doing so, you are honoring the God of honor. And tell me the good news. What's the good news? He said, you do that, and I'm going to honor you. Glory. Oh, glory to God. You do realize every good thing that we have enjoyed is God honoring us. Amen. The chairs you're sitting in, this building, this land, the properties, the cameras, the internet, all the stuff, that's God honoring us, blessing us. Isn't it? The greatest honor is His presence. Him showing up. Him manifesting Himself. That's the greatest honor. Well, is it within our power to initiate an increase? An increase of these things? It absolutely is. He said, if you honor me, I'll honor you. What if we honor him more? He's going to honor us more. What if we honor him much more? Then we ought to be hungry for this. Man, we ought to be all ears and all eyes and heart after this. Would you say it again? Lord, teach me, Lord, teach me. About, your honor. about your honor. Now he went on to say, 
Uh, those that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. People who have no time for God and his things and whatever, and no big deal, well, that's the way their stuff is going to be treated by him. Their life, <laughs> their family, their business, their money is going to be no big deal. I know people don't shout over that, but that's just as true as the first phrase, isn't it? <laughs> So what's the solution? Anybody know the solution? Well, I don't like that. Well, then honor God. And then you won't have to think about it. Go to Romans 13, please. Romans 13. In verse 7, Romans 13, 7, it says, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, Custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to, wh to whom honor. That's the King James. The God's Word translation says it like this. Pay everyone what you owe, whatever you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay them. If you owe someone respect, respect that person. If you owe someone honor, honor that person. Amen. Now this is... This is a different mindset than so many have, especially in the world, but, but also in the church. The Bible reveals that you and I owe certain people respect. We owe it just like you would owe taxes or owe money or owe a bill. You owe it to them. Now, that's not how a lot of people think. A lot of people, when they think about respect, they mostly think about you respecting me. And uh, actually, a lot of people demand respect. And they talk like that. And they slap the, their hand on the table. And they stomp their foot and go, you will respect me. You will respect me in my house. You will respect me. You will. And they demand respect. That's wrong. You can't make anybody respect you. You can yell. You can scream, you scream and demand. You, you cannot make somebody. Well, they have to respect me. They never have to respect you. It's not true. You can't make somebody respect you or honor you. Sometimes criminals say, well, I'll pull out my 45 and we'll see. You'll show me some respect. That's not respect. Maybe fear. That's not respect. And so people are wrong in that way. Don't, don't demand respect. Demonstrate respect. Everybody say that out loud. Don't demand respect. Demonstrate respect. And uh, then also, uh, when people, uh, so many, when thinking about uh, giving respect, they ask themselves the question, well, yeah, but have they earned my respect? You know, have they merited my respect? And so they're judging and got all this criteria that these people have to do this, this, and this, and that to see if they have earned. And so they're, everybody's on trial in their mind to see if they're worthy enough for me to show them some respect. That's not right. That's not godly. That's not the Bible. The Bible tells you certain people, you owe them respect. Now, you say, well, I just don't feel like I do. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. If you owe taxes, you can't write the IRS and say, you know, I just don't feel like I owe this. <laughs> you got a bill, you can't say, well, I just don't feel like I owe this bill. Well, you either owe it or you don't. Got nothing to do with how you feel. So, what did the Bible say? Pay the respect. If you owe someone respect, Respect that person. If you owe someone honor, honor that person. So we are believing God for revelation and light to learn how to do this and to do what the Bible told us to do. It's, it's an integral part of the next part of God's plan for us. Do we want more of his presence? Do we want more opportunity and resources to be used of him? And that's him honoring us. His honoring us is directly connected to what? Us honoring him. Come on, do you have a heart? Are you hungry? Do you want to honor him more than you ever have in your life? The Bible said you're bought with a price. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Do you want every part of your life to glorify God? You, your life, your kids, your family, your stuff, your business. Do you want God to be glorified? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it please you for people to look at you and your life and your family and your kids and your house and your stuff and just go, glory to God. 
glory to God. They don't just see you, but they realize God had to do something for them. I know them. They're not that smart. God had to do it. I know where they come from. They don't know anybody, but God had to do something there. That's why the weak things and the foolish things uh, God shows up so good in because people are looking at them going, that's got to be God. <laughs> and we do want him to get the glory. And that's how it ought to be. Now the thing that you'll keep coming across is that people like to imagine that they're very respectful of God and yet they're rude with people. And this cannot be. This is just is not so. People like to imagine, oh, I'm so reverent of God. I'm so honoring of God. But then they, they, they're very disrespectful of people round about them. That cannot be. Your, your respect for people reveals your respect for God. Yes. It's just a fact. John 5, I believe it's uh, 20, 23. John 5, 23, that all men, he said, should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Now we, we look at Jesus as the Son of God and as our Savior and Redeemer, head of the church, and he is, but at that point, these people he's talking to, they see him as a man, yeah. right? And so they're, they're saying, well, we honor God, but not you. We honor Moses, but not you. They despise Jesus and didn't realize that in so doing, they were despising God. Can you see the principle? If you don't respect the one God sent, you don't respect him. You know, I, I, I've had uh, people that had invited me for conferences or to be in churches and this kind of thing. And, and uh, more than once, thank God not too often, but more than once in these past several years, uh, people have called because I, I, I wasn't able to do it and, and, and just demanded and chewed on uh, my secretary or, or chewed on uh, Phyllis or, or something, you know, uh, like, like I'm, I'm going to hear them chew out my guys and then me go, oh yeah, I'm coming now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if they shown me that we made the right decision not to come? Because right. if they don't respect my people, they're, gonna not, they're not going to respect me. Now, see, they would argue with you. They'd say, oh, no, no, no. No, we'd respect you. No, can't be. It's just not true. It's not true. You, you can't say, well, I, I respect God, but then I don't respect people. If you're this way with people, you, will be the, you are this way with God, even though you don't realize it, because you're just that way. That's the way you are. And you don't just flip a switch and turn into somebody else when you hold up your hands to pray. You like, may, think, may like to think that you do, but you're not. Right. Ever how you are with people, that's how you are with God. It's just a fact. Remember he said this about love too, didn't he? If a man says he loves God, and he don't love his brother, hates his brother, he's a liar. Because right. if, if you don't love your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you have not seen? Amen. Do you see the principle? So do not separate it in your mind and say, well, I honor God, but I, you know, maybe have trouble with people. It's the same. It is the same. Uh, did you go to Proverbs? Last week, we talked about the beginning of disrespect, where disrespect and dishonor began. And we looked in Genesis. And we saw that God created Adam and Eve, and there was no disrespect in the original creation. I mean, how, how many believe that Adam and Eve never said anything rude or disrespectful to God before the fall, or to each other? It, God didn't make them that way. They sure didn't learn rudeness and disrespect from God, did they? No, he's the God of honor and glory. But we see when the devil came in on the scene, as soon as he starts talking, Disrespect. 
questioning God. We, we saw, uh, was it four things? First one, he said, did God say if you eat the fruit, you won't die? No, did God say? That's not a, a, a question wanting to be taught. That's disrespect, isn't it? And then after that, we saw contradiction. That uh, she said, yeah, God said, don't eat of the fruit of the tree. You'll die. He said, no, you won't die. Is that disrespectful? Yes. Contradiction. What else did we see? Anybody remember? Ignoring. Well, I'm, I'm going to skip that because we're going to come back to it in just a minute. And the last one, do you remember it? De deflecting. He asked them a question, where are you? Did you eat of the fruit? And instead of answering the question, they started explaining and going around the world and blaming each other. Uh, that's disrespectful. If somebody over you asks you a question, you should answer that question. Don't, don't dance around it. Answer the question. It takes humility. <laughs> But do it. And, and, and then if you want to tell them more, ask them, do they want to know more? Or they can ask you if they want to know more. But if, when God says, where are you? Tell me what the answer is. I'm right here. here, I'm right here. Is that what he said? No. He starts talking about all this other stuff. Did you eat of the fruit that I told you not to eat? What's the answer? Yes, yes I did. No, he didn't say that. Well, the woman. Did you? See, this is disrespectful. Disrespectful. Now, something that has come up over and over again and it is the Lord. Uh, I, I minister to you in, in the church by faith. Uh, let me explain. I study. I pray. But I'm believing God for the things I don't see and know and you don't see and know to come out. So I start with what I know and I'm believing God for utterance. And as things unfold, I, I'm learning while I'm talking. Do you understand? It's by faith. You know, in our recent series, uh, a few weeks into it, I changed the title. Why? Revelation's progressive. Where we got clarity on which way it needed to go. The same thing happens every series. If you're watching close, you'll see it. And, uh, you know, most every time after the service, I go back home and change clothes, and before I do anything else, I sit down and change my notes from what I preached. So the difference, I note the difference between what I planned and what happened. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Because again and again, I had an idea, but then the Lord showed me. So I need to go back and correct that and move this here or change this here or eliminate, and, and begin to see what he's emphasizing. Not what I thought, but what his hand is on. And something he has told us in this series already is that a big part of showing honor and showing respect is what you don't say and what you don't do. Do you remember hearing this more than once? This is a word from the Lord. It's what we don't say, what we don't do. And, and in the last few days I've been, I can almost see these big words flashing. Stop the disrespect. Stop the disrespect. People are trying to, well, how do I show respect? No, the Lord's telling us, stop the disrespect. And in doing that, you'll be showing honor. Can you see this? You know, people all over the place are on crusades and campaigns to save this and to stamp this out and to stop that. Faith Life Church should be right now on a crusade to stop the disrespect. Everybody say it out loud, stop the disrespect. Stop the disrespect. Say it out loud, stop the, stop the disrespect. One more time, stop the disrespect. Stop it. That means it's going on. We need to stop it. Like we've said, uh, we're, we're now into second and third generations who were contaminated by the rebellion of the 60s. And now children and their children uh, and, and uh, even beyond, have not been taught things concerning respect and honor, and it's been lost. And, it, and, and people are rude and disrespectful and dishonoring and don't even see it, don't even acknowledge it. And we don't want to be like that. We, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. We, we need our minds renewed right. so that we're transformed, not conformed to this world, but transformed right. so that we see things like the Lord does. 
Well, the Lord gave me some more things. Are you ready to hear? Yes. He gave me five eyes, the letter of the al alphabet I, five eyes of disrespect. Not the only five, it's the five I know right now. So, <laughs> five eyes of disrespect. Do you want to know them? Yes. Well, why, why should you know them? Why do you need to know them? Huh? So you can stop doing it. So I can stop doing it. The first one we've already touched on last week was ignoring. The first eye of disrespect, ignoring. To not even acknowledge that somebody's there, to not even acknowledge and, and act like they said anything or they did anything. Can you see this is tremendous disrespect? Yes. And is this what uh, Adam and Eve did with God when they ate of the fruit? Yes. When the devil asked them, did God say, you shall not eat of the fruit? Eve very clearly said, yes, God said, don't eat of the fruit, uh, you'll die. And the Bible said Adam wasn't even deceived concerning the whole thing. And yet, the Bible said right after this, they go, she takes the fruit, she eats it, she gives it to him, he eats it. Can you see? They had to totally ignore what God told them and what they knew he told them. They had to act like he wasn't even there, didn't they, to do that. Tremendous disrespect in ignoring. Somebody say ignoring. Now, when we're talking about uh, respect, this is not an indiscriminate thing. There's a certain amount of respect you ought to show to everybody. And, but yet, the Bible talks about those that you owe honor to and respect to, those that he has pointed out, those that are over you in different capacities. And it is, uh, it's not the same person to person. Some people you should show more honor to than others. And... Uh, you know, some people, if they demand that you acknowledge them, and respect, then why? You know, you don't treat them like a human being, like they have some value. But, uh, you know, there, a few years ago, there was these people that decided they were apostles. And there, is, there are apostles in the body of Christ, but they decided they were apostles, and they'd go into churches where people didn't even know them and tell the pastors, you know, you have to do what I say because I'm an apostle and you're just a pastor. <laughs> Well, you ought to ignore those folks. <laughs> because just because they think they're an apostle, that don't mean they're an apostle to you. There are different measures of grace. And, and, and apostles are used to, to lay foundation and to build works. And like Brother Hagin used to say, a lot of these folk never even built a chicken coop. <laughs> Much less a church. And they've never done anything. They're going to come in and tell you how to run things. That's no, no. Uh, you ought to ignore those folk. Right. Yeah. But then there are those that are over you. You ought, you ought to acknowledge them and remember what they said. And particularly your God, never, let's, let's never ignore him and what he told us to do. I'm going to come back to that one a little bit, but let's get into the next one. The next one is, the next I is interrupting. Interrupting five eyes of disrespect. What's the first one? Ignoring. What's the second one? Interrupting. Did you find Proverbs? Weren't you holding a place there? Proverbs 18, 13. 18, 13. Let's read that. He says, He that answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. Uh, today's English version says, listen before you answer. Everybody say that out loud. Listen before you answer. Hold, hold your place right there. Go to James. Go to James, first chapter. James 1 and 19. James 1 and 19, he says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man, how many of us? Every, every man be what? Slow. Swift 
to hear. Swift means what? Quick, fast. Quick, fast to do what? Hmm? How many quick hearers do I have in here? Let me see. <laughs> People are going, huh? <laughs> You're a quick hearer. Anything comes up, you go. <laughs> quick, swift to hear, and slow to speak. And slow to wrath. Now millions are practicing this verse in reverse. <laughs> Aren't they? Aren't they? They are hot-headed, quick, get mad and upset. And they are quick to speak. A lot of times got their mouth in gear before their mind's even awake. And your mind's going, what's he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> He's ahead of me. <laughs> and they are slow to hear. Is this the word of God? Yes. Should we pay attention to it? Yes. Should we live according to the direction? Yes. Then should we be quick to get mad? No. Should we be quick to speak? No. Tell me what you should be. Quick to hear. Are many people slow to hear? Oh, so many people. They, they're just undisciplined. And if they stop long enough for somebody else to say something, they're loading their guns behind their back about what they're going to say as soon as they can break out again. They, they're not good hearers at all. A, uh, a good listener, a good hearer is a tremendous thing. And uh, parents, let me encourage you concerning your children. Practice this with them. We're going to talk about some other things in just a moment. But you need to be a good hearer when it comes to your sons and daughters. That's right. A lot of parents are very foolish in this area. They won't listen to the child. They won't hear them out. And it's treating the child like they're dumb and ignorant and unimportant. Uh, my, my dad, who's in heaven now, blessed me in this area. He'd listen to me. You know, particularly as boys get older, they need to be able to talk to their, their moms and their dads. But particularly their dads, if you're going to be a man, that's his example. Moms should be able to talk to their mothers especially. And, and have involved conversations. And we had a giant oak tree at our house. It's still there. Huge thing. And a big swing. You know. It's the south. And uh, I've sat out there with my dad for hours at a time. And him just listening to me. He'd listen to me for an hour at a time. And not say a word. Just listen. It did something for me. I mean, uh, I, I never had a lot of the insecurities that some folks struggle with. And I know it's because of things like this. God helping me through mom and through dad and things like this. He treated me, they treated me like I was important, like I was intelligent. Like I might have something to say. That wasn't always right. It needed corrected. But a lot of parents, uh, you know, we see it with, with our children here, you know, and in other places and other churches. The, 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 the kids got something to say, and uh, they won't listen. They won't hear. Very foolish. Besides that, it's sinning against the Word of God. The Bible told you to be what? Quick to do what? Quick to hear. Quick to hear. And what else? Not quick to talk. Don't be quick to talk. Be slow to talk. People miss it most of the time by moving too fast and speaking too soon. You've done it. I've done it. 
Let's change though. Let's grow up. Let's learn to do what first? Listen. And then wait about what? Speak. Wait about speaking. And sure wait about getting upset. So many folks, because they're, they're so faithless, they hear any inkling of a problem and they just freak out. They just go ballistic. And I've had people look at me in amazement because they could tell I wasn't getting upset. And they said, well, Brother Keith, I said, I said, we don't even know what's going on yet. And again and again, have you ever found out again and again, it wasn't half like what they were trying to tell you or acting like. So why get all worked up First, Amen. have some wisdom and find out what's going on before you even know what you got to deal with. Faith is a rest, isn't it? Don't be quick to get upset. The Bible told you to be slow about that. And even if you get mad, you can be angry but don't sin. Right? And be slow about talking. That means you smile and go. <laughs> and all kind of thoughts is in your mind about what to say, but you've got enough sense to go at any time to speak yet. Keep listening. Watch. Is this how most of the world operates? Oh, no. Now, remember, we, we, we were talking about this earlier. Is God answering our prayers? He's showing us. How, what changes to make and how to do them. Okay, now, are we going to do it? Yep. Yes, we are. This is the deal. Because a lot of people will, you know, will hear some of these things and go, mm, yeah, that's good, yeah, that's interesting. And then three months from now, they'll say, well, you know, I, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but. And I know maybe this sounds like disrespect. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but da 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 Well, you're, judge, you're condemning your own self because you're saying you know better. Right. And you're just choosing not to do it. Let's put these things into practice. What do you think? Yes. Do you think it'd make a difference in our lives, oh, yes. in our families, in our relationships? Tremendous, tremendous difference. Be slow, quick rather to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Say it out loud. Quick to hear. Quick to hear. Is that you? Yes. No matter how you have been in times past, I want you to make a good confession right now. Say it out loud. I am, I am quick, to hear. quick to hear. You're quick to listen. You're quick. You, you, you know how to hush and push everything out and pay attention and listen. You're quick to do it. You ought to get good at it. Good at listening. Good at hearing. <laughs> you know, piloting has helped me with that even more. If they say heading 350 and you, you think they said 320, that might be a mountain instead of empty airspace. <laughs> Descend to 6,000 feet and you thought they said 3,000, that could be a housetop. Hmm? It pays to listen and pay attention. Not imagine, not fill in the blanks, not change. And how many think the Word of God is so important you ought to pay close attention to what He told you. Be quick to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. Go back to Proverbs, please. What's this second eye of disrespect? Interrupting. I know we live in a society that practices stepping all over each other. I mean, you look at the news, you look at talk shows, you look at it, and people are yelling each other, uh, talking over each other, and people, some people think, well, that's just, I, I'm so-and-so uh, background, that's how we grew up, and we're all talking at the same time. Well, it's okay if multiple conversations are happening in the room, but it's not okay to be interrupting the person you're talking to, right. or for them to be interrupting you. That is not okay what culture, background that you're from, or who did it, or if mom and them did it, or grandpa and them did it, it's wrong. Look at this verse again. You feel the excitement? <laughs> he, he that answers a matter, before he hears it, what is it? It's folly 
and it's shame. Listen to the, 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 uh, the today's English version says, listen before you answer. If you don't, you're being stupid and insulting. <laughs> Easy to read translation words it like this. L let people finish speaking before you try to answer them. That way you'll not embarrass yourself and look foolish. <laughs> I've seen people get all upset and almost cuss people out and carry on because they started to say something and they went off on this tangent because they thought they were letting them go or they thought they were going to shut this down or change this. And when they got through and the person said, well, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say that you get to stay and we're going to give you a raise, but well, I'm going to have to think about that again. <laughs> Did you know it just happened over and over that God was moving on people to, to give them favor and it was already in motion and then this person came and opened their mouth and shot it off and messed up the favor that God was already had going in their life. Let people finish speaking before you try to answer them. Interrupting is one of the most disrespectful things that you can do. I know uh, Phyllis, uh, some years ago, she and I were going out to a, a, a meeting, and this was before we were able to provide our own travel arrangements, and uh, we were, had flew in commercially, then we had to drive quite a distance, and the pastor was driving us, and I was riding up front with him, and Phyllis was in the back, and, and it's a pretty long drive. And when we got to the place, uh, I'm going in to put my mic on and change, fix my hair a little bit and get ready for the service and, and he's talking to her and, and, and he said, uh, you know, Brother Keith doesn't say much. Boy, he didn't say much at all. And she, without thinking, she said, uh, she said she told him, well, you know, he rarely interrupts people. <laughs> and then she thought, uh-oh. <laughs> but that was the case. He just nonstop the whole time. <laughs> you know, uh, I was able to spend time with Brother Kenneth Hagin Sr. Uh, numerous times. And there were times when people wanted to see him. Of course, uh, he was so well known and so many people knew him. Uh, on occasion, he would, he would take time to, to see somebody individually on, on a situation. And sometimes he, wanted, he let me stay. I'd get up to go and he said, no, you just stay. And so, I remember the, more than once, people came in and... Uh, they're, they're telling him about all their problems and about all their, their, their stuff and, and uh, it goes into five minutes and, and ten minutes and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, you should be quiet. And I'm looking at him and I know how he is. Uh, he's got something. I can see it in his eye. He's got something to tell him. I've seen people sit there and talk to him for 20 minutes and then him get up and say, well, it was nice meeting you. I've got to go prepare for my service and walk out of the door and never say anything else. And it's their own fault. Why? Someone said, well, I don't think somebody ought to be that way. Did you know your God is that way? Yeah. I said, did you know your God is that way? Yeah. Why do you think he told you to be still and know that he is God and to wait on him? You have to show him respect. You have to show the Holy Spirit respect. Uh, the Spirit of God is not a coercer. He's not going to grab you and throw you on the floor and put his hand over your mouth and say, now shut up and listen to me. <laughs> You might need it, but he's not going to do it. Somebody says, oh, I wish he would. He's not going to do it. That's not how he is. That's not who he is. And besides that, if you don't respect it enough to show it some respect and defer to it, then you wouldn't know what to do with it if he gave it to you. A verse that we're going to get to eventually is where the Lord said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs. Until you learn a certain amount of respect and honor, you don't qualify for things. You wouldn't know how to handle them. You, you wouldn't know what you had. You understand? And so this growing in honor actually qualifies you to handle greater things and more precious things of God. But if he sees you disrespecting the thing that's in front of you, well, he'd be, he, he wouldn't be uh, a good steward of his resources to give you more. Can you see this? 
interrupting. Everybody say interrupting. What we're talking about now is deference, to defer to. To defer means to, to give place to or, or to wait on. You know, we live in the age of interruption with our technology. Do I need to explain it? Hmm? We've got beeping, buzzing, ringing, <laughs> don't we? And uh, it's interrupting our lives continuously night and day, and people have not only grown accustomed to it, they've grown addicted to it. If they're not buzzing and beeping, they start having withdrawals. What's wrong? What's wrong? Why aren't they calling me? Why isn't this? Why isn't that? <laughs> I've been talking to, to people, pastors, ministers, about important things, things about the church, things about spiritual direction. And their kids come in and interrupt us. And they just stop and talk with them about Kool-Aid and nothing. And we lose the momentum and flow. Their staff comes in and talk about cutting the grass and this and that. And uh, a lot of times just never get back to it. This is foolish. Isn't it? I've had people, ministers, I'm talking, they came to me. We had just a few minutes of time. And this is precious time and important and I'm trying to say something and the phone rings and they take the call and they stand there and go, no, the blue one. Yeah, the blue. How much was it? Well, no, they got one over there for, for like $20 less. This is how fools act. Friend, just because somebody calls doesn't mean you have to answer. Just because somebody texts or emails doesn't mean you have to stop what you're doing and respond to that. If you do, now you are text-led, not spirit-led. You are email-led, not Holy Ghost-led. You are phone-led, how many of you understand this has become a big problem yeah. all over the place? Yeah. I've seen, I have seen this repeatedly in recent times. Parents are talking to their children and the child is texting while the parent's talking to them. If you do that, you're foolish because you're misrepresenting God to them. They come away thinking God is like that and he is not like that. You got better things to do than listen to him? You won't hear from him. Did you hear me, friends? Do we want the move of God in our church? Do we want the presence of God in our homes? Do we want our sons and daughters to grow up godly, honorable young men and women that know how to treat each other and their spouses and train their children? It's not going to happen automatically and it's not going to happen by us being so loose and lax that anything goes and everything's okay. I'm not talking about being hard, but I'm talking about being consistent. Even your little ones. They come and you're talking to somebody and they interrupt you. Don't let that go. Say, no, honey, no, shh, hush. Mama's talking. Here's the deal. Do it every time. You got to be consistent. Every time. Because you're teaching them volumes about God. You don't have to be mean. Don't yell. Don't scream. Just don't change. <laughs> and be consistent. Don't let your electronic devices guide the course of your day and your life. Learn how to be led by the Spirit. You know, people get upset because they call you and you didn't answer. I'll just tell you right now, I don't answer all calls. <laughs> I don't want you to be insulted. But if I happen to be talking to the Most High God and you call, you know, He's more important than you. Right? 
Or if there's other situations, you know. The thing about uh, phones and all this other stuff, it's made it possible for people to be intrusive at their whim with no knowledge of what's going on at the, at, on the other side, on the other end. Right? Uh, I, I make it a habit that if I call some, first of all, before I call somebody, I check my heart. I don't just have a thought run across my mind and reach and grab. So much of our communication could be reduced in half or to a third. If we just stop and think a little bit, we'd say, well, let me get through with this, and then I'll know more about that, and then I'll send this, and you could send one email instead of 10. That's right. That's right. Going back and forth and all this kind of stuff. Hmm? And the time you would save. And the call. A lot, a lot of calls are frivolous and unnecessary. And, and realize when you're calling somebody, you are interrupting them. Now, it may be okay. It may not be okay. But what I do is a, is a common thing. And I call, first of all, I check my heart. And, and, and I see if I think I should or not. But then, if I do, one of the first things I usually ask is, uh, are you in the middle of something? Can you talk? If not, I'll call you back. Another time. Is that showing them some respect yes. and their life and what's going on with Should we do that kind of thing? Yes. Interrupting is disrespectful. Do you, do you want to change it? Hmm? Be, be aware of doing things that are interruptive to people. Coming into their situations, coming into their homes, coming into their services, coming into this and that, you, you want to show respect to their house, to their place, to their space, to their privacy, right? Let's don't be crude and ignorant like so much of the world is. Let's let God restore honor in our lives and in our church. Let's let our children grow up and learn how they ought to act and do. Do, do you know it'll, it'll make a huge difference with them in their life? And in their occupation, in their profession, if you've got a CEO of a company and he's seeing somebody that don't know how to shut up and interrupts him 12 times and then your kid comes along and is so respectful and got it all together and when they talk it means something, don't you think that's going to make a difference as to who he picks to put in his spot? Yes. That's why the Bible said, honor your father and your mother. Why? It comes with a promise. It's going to be well with you. And you're going to live long. Is this important? Yes. It is so important. Let me go back to this uh, in closing. Uh, I hadn't forgot about the other eyes, but uh, can you come back? Yes, sir. <laughs> I hope you can. Uh, what was the first one? Anybody remember? Ignoring. What was the second one? Interrupting. Uh, the first one, ignoring, I, I shared first service and experience. I'll share with you again. Not necessarily because I want to, but because I, I believe it'll help you. When I first started working with uh, uh, Brother Hagen, Sr., um, I don't know, a year or so after I had, uh, was working there, he came into my office one day. Just came in the door, pulled it to, sat down in the chair, three feet from me across from my desk. I was on the phone. And uh, I, I let him sit there while I talked on the phone for 15 minutes. Eventually he got up and walked out. And to this day, I don't know what he wanted to say to me. You might say, well, how could you be that ignorant? You wonder. <laughs> Some of the things that I'm teaching you now, the Lord taught me. I learned. Not all of them the easy way. You know, there's different ways to learn. You know, one great way to learn 
is to learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> Don't make them yourself. Learn from what they did. That's a great way to learn. But let me explain to you my reasoning, and it, you might understand it a little better. I didn't purpose to be disrespectful, and yet I was. Every time I think about it, it just makes me cringe. I think, boy, it makes me want to slap myself. But the Lord knew my heart, and uh, of course, I, we had great, many years after that fellowship with the Hagans and ministry, but uh, the, the person I was on the phone with was a minister, well-known lady minister that had told me she was praying for me in my ministry and had gotten some things she felt like in the spirit and was telling me about them. And in my ignorance and youth, I thought, well, this is the Holy Ghost. And so the thought came to my mind, well, who are you going to respect more? the Holy Ghost, or this man. Now, did you hear the tone of that? Right. See, you, you, should, you should know by the tone that's not right. And so this, this person was going on and on and on and on. And of course, you know, your flesh likes to hear about things about yourself. But I'll just tell you, I missed it. I missed it. I should have got off that phone, lickety split. Because this is my elder. This is his office I'm sitting in. His phone I was talking on. Are y'all with me? Do you understand this? Why, why are you saying that, Brother Keith? Because so many people, they, they, they know it'd be wrong to just say, I'm not going to listen, I'm not going to do. So they say, God told me. And God is doing. And God, and so that gives them a blanket to disrespect everybody and ignore everybody and just say God said. Right. When God didn't say. God's not in it. God's not in disrespect right. and dishonor. Yeah. I've had people that the Lord spoke to me to, to share something with them and give them some instruction and, and I'm trying to say it and they, they interrupt me and say, yeah, but God told me so and so. Well, now what do I say now? What do I say? Am I going to say, yeah, okay, God told you this, but I'm going to tell you something else. See, their, their pride and, and disrespect has closed the door now to the help that they need. Because, hey, you ought to do what God told you to do. When they shouldn't have said it like that. And this is one of the benefits you should get from your elders. Helping you to discern what is God. And what is not God, and instead of making these strong statements about God said this and God said that, you need to talk more realistically and say, I had an impression, and I thought maybe it was the Lord. What do you think? I had an impression. And be open. Leave, leave some, I'm talking about your elders now. When it comes to elders and people that are over you in the Lord, you need to understand this too. It's okay for you to wait on an elder. It's not okay for them to wait on you. It's okay for an elder to interrupt you. It's not okay for you to interrupt them. Do you understand? Are these some things that have been lost that need to be restored? Is God teaching us? Is he helping us? Yes. Do you want to know him? Yes. Are you willing to make some changes? Yes. Have you heard enough already this morning to make some changes? Yes. To do some things? Let's stop the disrespect. Let's stop the ignoring. Let's stop the interrupting. If we just did that this week and continue to do it the rest of our lives, it'd be, we'd be different. Right. Wouldn't we? Yes. Stand up on your feet, everybody.